Hi, apologies for the brief break in videos. It's been pretty busy this January, what with homeschooling and that kind of stuff. So I've not really had chance to do any videos, but I should be able to keep up a regular schedule once again. And today we're going to have a look at this Miniware MHP30. Now, if you're a regular follower of this channel, you will have seen this in one of my videos where I uh, reflowed an inductor on the LED driver. And I did promise that I'd do a proper video on this. So today we're going to have a look at this, probably take it apart as well, and uh, explain the features and what it's all about. So this is a mini hot plate for reworking your PCBs or selective heating. So uh, it comes shipped with this little silicone cover which protects the hot plate area. And the 30 is referring to the 30 by 30 millimeter hot plate area. It is, as you can see, a very small device, very compact, and either if you have a PCB that's this size, you can obviously reflow the entire board. So things like um, LED PCBs, those star PCBs, that kind of thing, you can obviously heat all in one go. Or if you're doing a little bit of rework, say on a mobile phone or on another board, if you don't want to heat the entire board up, which can obviously stress certain components, you can place it in the area of interest and then only heat up sort of the components in the vicinity. So for example, if I was trying to rework that IC, although I could use hot air, you might want to use a preheater to get it halfway there, and it would stop you heating up other components all the way around the board. So that's the intention. And this is a USB powered device. It is designed to run from a USB power supply that has power delivery. And there's two versions of this. So there is this kit that came with a power delivery power supply, so 65 watt USB-C power supply. That retails for around £75, or for £60 you basically get one of these and the cable and nothing else. Now unfortunately the one that I got didn't come with a UK adapter. Uh, I did manage to use another adapter to plug this in for initial testing, but um, I'm just going to use this RAV power, um, power delivery 65 watt AC adapter for today. Now some of the specifications, it's designed to have a 60 watt heater and it's supposed to be able to heat up from room temperature all the way up to 300 degrees in about 150 seconds. Temperature stability somewhere in the region of 3% uh, and that's about it really. So you can power it from a normal USB power supply but at reduced power. But if you do have one that is power delivery then it will be able to draw the full 60 watts. So just taking a closer look at the unit, you can see it's really quite a compact piece of kit. It's also very nicely built. So everything that I've seen from this manufacturer, Miniware, has been really nicely made. And as someone pointed out in an earlier video, it'd be really nice if they made a proper soldering station and a nice hot air station as well, because the quality would probably be anything out there. On this unit, we've got the same user interface that you see on the soldering iron. So we've got a little OLED. There's two buttons at the back for controlling the menus and I always forget how this works. It would be nice if there were a couple more buttons on here, you know, an, an OK button and an up down or something a little bit clearer than just A and B. But uh, there's a couple of feet. So these fold out for a bit of stability and it's got these nice rubber pads, but then that sits quite nicely on the bench and isn't too wobbly. It seems to work quite nicely. Uh, in the previous video, I, I didn't even notice that, so I just used it as it was. And then at the top here, we've got the hot plate itself, which unplugs from the main module, I guess, if the heater burns out. Although I think it's actually a solid state heater. I think it's a, uh, a MOSFET that's been designed just to dissipate power. You can see here, we've got the pogo pins. So five pogo pins in total, two for the thermocouple, and then three probably for the MOSFET as described. So that's the heater and that is really quite a nice and quite an intricate piece of kit actually. I do quite like the design of that. And then we've got the unit itself and you can see here we've got the five pogo pin sockets and then in the middle is an RGB LED and that LED changes colour to indicate when the hot plate is getting hot. It's a little bit uh, confusing. It goes through sort of a white colour which I think it should just go from blue to red, but they've included some other colours, which makes you lose track of what's really going on. Uh, and that's about it. So let's try undoing these screws and see if we can take it apart further. Right, so two screws and the bottom came away. Uh, you just do have to be careful because these buttons do drop out. 
But we've got a PCB at the bottom and it looks like this separates a little bit more. There we go. Um, so we've got a PCB at the top here. Ooh. And that really has nothing on it other than connections to these 0.1 inch headers and the LED itself. Um, we've got a little bit of the chassis as well, so that's really quite nicely made. All of it anodized. Move that off to the side. And then we've got the main PCB itself with a connection onto the OLED. So here's the main PCB, and no surprise, it's powered by an STM32, which I think is the same story for all of their devices with the OLED on the front. We've got here a thermocouple amplifier for interfacing with the thermocouple that's in the heater here. We've got a chip here, I'm not quite sure what this one is. Uh, we've got a DC to DC converter and one on the back here, a buzzer, and there'll be one IC, probably this one, associated with communicating on the USB-C line to say it's a power delivery device. But other than that, not much there. Uh, you can see there's a few capacitors here just next to the connector off to the OLED, so presumably that's for the charge pump for the OLED voltage but nothing else really going on. It looks like there's flux residue here, but this does appear to be some kind of epoxy, and you can see it's here as well, but it's quite a uh, firm epoxy. It's not flux residue, so for some reason they've decided that needs to be on there. But other than that, there's not really much to say about it. Uh, they've done really well to get the routing all done. Presumably it's a four layer, but they must have used some blind wires because not all of the wires go all the way through. But yeah, really quite a nice, PCB, very compact design. Now Miniware did actually contact me quite a long time ago about reviewing this product and then they said they had to postpone it because they were having some problems. They didn't elaborate any further. I don't know whether that was production problems or a fault with the PCB or something like that. You saw it was at version 1.3 on that PCB so maybe they had to do one extra spin. Uh, but it is available on all the usual sellers now. I'll put a few links down below if you're interested in taking a look at this unit. But now we'll just give it a quick test and see how it works. So rather than use the really nice USB-C cable that they provide, the problem with this is it's slightly too short. So I'm going to have to use a different one to reach my socket. So hopefully this doesn't affect the operation. We'll plug it in. And you can see you've got the OLED on the front. And then the very familiar user interface to those that use their Miniware products. Now you can see here the unit is cold. And we've got a green LED illuminating under here, which in my opinion is not right. This should be blue when it's cold and going to red when it's hot. So I've got the user instructions here just because I can never remember how to use the interface, but it does say it here. Basically, you have the ability to turn it on to heating or you can adjust the temperature and you can put it into standby mode as well. So in standby mode, short button A to start heating. So let's take a look at that. A is the one on the left hand side. So when we turn this on, it'll start heating up. You can see it's getting 19 volts from the adapter. It's timing how long it is taking to heat up and you can see that arrow pointing upwards to say it is actually getting hot. And at some point we'll see the LED changing color and then I think it should finish on red. So you can see it's starting to go a bit yellow now. I'm pretty sure they could add more granularity than they have done. And then it goes white slash blue. You would think that would indicate cold. It's quite a nice blue, so a little bit odd to choose that color. And then it goes to red at about 200. Now, I think, if I recall correctly, when I had a different set point, it was set up so that when it got to that set point, it would turn red. So I don't think it's any specific temperature that's saying it's hot. Uh, it's just whenever it's probably a percentage of the set point that you've set it to sets where those colours change. But as you can see, to me, those don't appear to be very intuitive colours. You'd expect it to go from blue, cycle through amber, orange and red when it gets there. For some reason, they put all those weird colours in there. But that did heat up quite quick. You can see it's 1 minute 54 and it's at 225 degrees C. So it's saying it's at about 223 degrees C. We'll try the infrared thermometer. It should work quite well on the black surface. And yeah, 226, 220. So about 6 degrees out. 
Uh, obviously this isn't necessarily in calibration so that seems to be matching up with what it should be delivering. So we'll just adjust the temperature up a little bit. So you're supposed to hold down the A button and then you can increase the temperature. So it does go all the way up to 350 degrees C and I think you just leave it and it goes back to the normal screen. And what we'll do is we'll just try and take a few components off a board. So we've got the old ring light PCB from JLC PCB. In the next video, we are going to finish this project. It's been going on way too long. I finally got the chassis sort of more or less okay. So uh, we will be revisiting this project and finally finishing it off. And then I'll share all the files with you and hopefully I'll be able to give away some of the boards as well. So we'll just wait for this to heat up and then see if we can get some of these components off here. Uh, JLC PCB use a lead-free process for their assembly service, so it does need a slightly higher temperature. It doesn't need 350 degrees C probably, but there will be some losses in the board. So we'll see how it copes with trying to get some of these components off here. Right, so I've just found some things to balance this PCB on, but let's place it on here and see how well it heats up. Now there's quite a lot of copper on here so it might take a while to heat up. Although actually I'm already starting to see a bit of smoke coming off the board. Surely it's not there yet. Oh it is actually climbing very rapidly. We should be able to get some of these components off pretty quick then. Yep. Yeah. Well, wow, that was incredibly quick and you can see that worked really quite nicely. I think the electrolytics just off there, but maybe no, it's not quite got enough there. But all of these surface mount parts are coming off very nicely. Let's just try and heat up the electrolytic. Yeah, and there we go. So yeah, that worked really quite nice. That was pretty quick to heat up all of those passive parts. Only probably about five seconds in contact with this. I guess with a hot plate like this, it's not that dissimilar from putting a soldering iron direct on the other side of the board. So I guess you probably shouldn't be too surprised by that, but that was very efficient at removing those components. So that's a look at the MHP30 really quite a nicely built device. I do really like it and I've used it quite a lot since I've had it so uh, it probably does say it's a little bit more than a niche piece of equipment although it is quite small in the heating area. Uh, some people would probably prefer something a little bit bigger. The big hot plate that I've got is too difficult to do any rework over. You can reflow an entire board but if you're sitting there trying to take components off it First of all, it sits too high off the bench, but also it's just too big to do things with two hands. So something like this is actually very useful and I do like the design of it very much. Now the price of it, 60 or 75 pound with the AC adapter. For some, that's a little bit pricey for something that may be a niche tool, but I think that's actually quite a reasonable price. You can almost see where your money's going because of how nicely this thing is made. The chassis is all anodized aluminium and it's not cheap to manufacture something like this with all these intricate parts. So, uh, you know, it's almost not too bad paying that money just for something that looks quite as nice as this. Now, I do wish that they will fix the LED issue. I don't think it makes any sense, the colour scheme that they've got. It's still quite hot at the moment. Um... Yeah, about 100 degrees, and it's showing this bluey white colour. It looks to me more blue than it does white, and so you would be tempted to think that means it's cold and then go and pick it up and burn your fingers. So it would be nice if it just went from blue all the way up to red. It doesn't need green. The green doesn't fit in with sort of the hot, cold colour scheme. So, uh, But on that, you can do a firmware update over the USB lead. So I think you plug it into your PC while pressing a button, and it goes into firmware update mode. So maybe that is something that can be fixed. So I will put links to this in the description down below. I don't think they've got their own seller page, but I'll put some AliExpress and I think they're selling it on Banggood as well. So I'll put a few links to that if you are interested in this piece of equipment, which I do think is really quite a nice device. Uh, 
Big thank you to those of you that have been supporting me on Patreon. Really nice that you're still supporting me even though I had a few months where I was a little bit quiet. Also, don't forget to visit the video sponsor, JLC PCB, if you want your high quality boards. And I hope you found the video useful. And until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>